right if loving you is wrong fans uh i mean i feel like i've touched on this subject in a couple other videos before in the past for if loving you is wrong but i it, it never fails after every episode or every new episode trailer that gets released people want me to talk about this subject now i was a bit nervous just because i feel like I didn't want to drop one every single week because it seems like each episode we're going to see more of a deterioration of Alex's mental stability. And based on the trailer for next or this week, excuse me, and I have to thank you all because if I'm not mistaken, the trailer for next week's, well, the trailer for this week's episode, I'm sorry, it's Sunday. You know, I got that mixed up. My bad. The trailer for the upcoming episode is already over 10,000 hits. So thank you so much for that. And I've done some research. I talked with some friends of mine who are in, a, you know, who are, were in like psychology or took several classes in a college. And I even did some online research as well. So I just want to touch on some of the key points. And a lot of you have already said this stuff before, but I really wanted to compile it in this uh, one video. And if you follow me on social media like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or even the community tab here on YouTube, which again, links to all my social media are in the description box below. I posted like a nine, I think it was like nine photos, like a comp compilation or collage. Those were from this week's episode alone. The next episode alone, we see so many different facial expressions and emotions from Alex. And I can't go about saying shout out to Amanda Clayton because I know some people aren't feeling this new direction for Alex, which I can definitely understand because it really reminds me to well a greater extent or should I just say to the same level in a way of when Catherine Cryer went from shooting Jennifer Salison, saying that she's going to divorce Jim, cleaned out the house, and then next thing you know, she's kind of back to her happy-go-lucky self, trying to hook up Hannah with Derek, cancels the divorce plans, and pretty much is acting and getting into threesomes, acting like someone who just doesn't care about life. So with the haves and the have-nots, you know, Catherine Cryer's character was all over the place. And we got a drastic shift with Alex as well. So basically, I think I'm actually falling more in the line of Alex possibly having disassociative identity disorder or uh, DID, which was formerly, you know, called multiple personality disorder. They kind of changed the uh, specific title of it, but I, it wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't, excuse me, I wouldn't be surprised if you know she actually has it because a couple of things that really makes us think that this could be the case is the fact that after what happened the night before she woke up thinking ian had drugged and taken advantage of her and i'm sitting over here like what the heck is going on i mean do you not even remember anything that happened in the past like i don't even know if it's been 12 solid hours but all i'm saying is Alex doesn't remember a damn thing. And it seems like in the next episode, Ian does kind of snap her out of it and reminds her what happened. And she's probably feeling still a bit drunk and, well, embarrassed because of the fact that if Alex was someone who really thought Ian had taken advantage of her and put stuff in her body, drugs and stuff that she didn't want, I doubt that she would allow Ian to escort her across the street back to her house. So I'm thinking that Ian calms her ass down and tells her exactly what happened. Now, disassociative amnesia is also, you know, uh, kind of a branch off from DID. And in some cases, even though the reports are, I guess you could say the findings for the research of this specific reason behind disassociative amnesia isn't 100%, but there is a good amount of people who actually have been diagnosed with this. And one of the factors leading to this DID was reported childhood sexual or physical abuse. And as we found out, you know, for years, Alex dealt with that from her father and her mother said it was okay. So that definitely says a lot about Alex in terms of it makes sense why she possibly has like a Two-Face Harvey Dent or Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, or if you want to go X-Men, um, Jean Grey and uh, the Phoenix personas, you know, she kind of flips back and forth. And another side effect, you know, going along with the amnesia is trouble remembering certain events which we definitely see in, oh, excuse me, as we definitely saw at the ending of last week's episode. However, one thing I really want to point out here, guys, is the fact that with all the guys Jennifer Pepper has been with, one must ask the question, did she always experience this? Oh, wow, I had sex with this person. I woke up the next morning and then I didn't know what happened. 
or was alcohol something that was always a factor in that? Because for me, I think her waking up at Ian's place the next morning and not really remembering, I think that was more so alcohol than a personality disorder in my opinion because Alex drank a lot. Ian warned her this is some strong stuff. So I feel like that definitely played a factor not to mention the woman had just lost her marriage she just signed the divorce papers so she was just what she was distraught from the divorce papers earlier in the day going to the hospital for the board meeting and telling randall that he wasn't the father and you know the fact that she had to admit to lying to the entire board uh you know to save dr raston randall breaking down as a result of that so yeah we slowly saw a breakdown of alex's life so then yeah after everything that went on she drank a lot and tried to find solace or yeah, solace or comfort in Ian because to her that's a form of familiarity and someone who she's been with before. So I do think that in terms of this specific case, I think alcohol and depression were definitely factors as to why she woke up not remembering what happened. Um, and also go back to episode 37, betting on Tina. Uh, this was actually a clip on the own YouTube channel. And Brad and uh, Marcy are having a conversation about how, and I think the uh, title of the video was actually some along the lines of Brad is thinking Marcy is pushing him back to Alex. And again, this is season one, episode 37, betting on Tina. And, you know, Marcy was saying how Randall is such a cunning, manipulative person, two master's degrees in psychology. His, he's been able to groom murder suspects to know exactly what to say, do, mannerisms, physical body language, also got profiles on all the jury. That way they knew exactly what to say in order to get off. So it was basically like, hey, as soon as Randall set his sights on Alex, it was a wrap. She was helpless. But Brad vouches for Alex. And it's kind of interesting because in that scene, it's like, hey, we're not trying to defend our you know spouses. But at the same time, we're just trying to break down why would they do this to us? But then Brad is like, look, Alex is a master of like deception, manipulation. She's cunning, similar to Randall in the way, because you have to think about it. She had to change herself from her background with Rusty and her mother. I forget the mother's name. I'm sorry about that. I know Rusty is the mother. I mean, excuse me, Rusty is the father. But, you know, she distanced herself from her family. She survived the turmoil. She had to live with them all those years. She got rid of her accent. She pretty much remade herself in order to distance herself from them. So that actually makes sense as to why she might have split personas in a way, or at least gave herself a, a complete psychological and, you know, makeover and identity. So I don't know where her attitude came from in terms of, you know, a one and done kind of thing where, oh yeah, all these guys are hooked up with, it was just one time, I'd never contact them back again. And it's almost like there's no guilt or shame in her doing that. So what I'm thinking is, you know, the Alex we see in this upcoming episode, I don't even know what to say because of the fact that it seems like she's definitely lost her mind, if you will. I mean, Brad said that in last week's episode when he's talking to Lucian. It's like, oh, I think she's lost her mind. And now it's like, oh, damn, I think that's the case because based on the freaking trailer alone, we see so much rain from like confusion, shock. She goes outside to vomit. Uh, Walker walks across the street as soon as she gets in Brad and Marcy confront her and then you have her telling Brad she's done with this life she's just she doesn't want it she goes out to her vehicle to leave even though I don't think it's a good idea for her to be driving in her condition but somehow finds her way to Ian's office and uh, then walks in there saying I gave it all up I walked away from my own life and it's all because of you and it's like what the heck I ain't gonna lie even though I think she's attractive uh, that was a bit creepy but then again, you know, quarantine makes a person feel lonely. So you put up with a lot of stuff. It means being with somebody you want. I'm just saying I ain't shame. But I think that Alex is definitely going to put on quite a show. Somebody was telling me that when they read the subtitles for the episode online, you know, like if you watch the trailer and put on the subtitles, somebody said like they're dying or I'm dying. And they sent me screenshots of it for Alex. And I'm like. I don't know if like Alex is physically dying. I feel like, you know, she feels like she's dying the longer she stays in this uh, life that she never wanted. So for me personally, I think that people have been making valid points about Alex potentially having a disorder, multiple personalities. I, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, it it's almost like we're going to see so many sides of Alex. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm probably going to have to update this particular video every couple weeks. Like I might have to do another Oh, here's another side of Alex that we never seen before. So 
just keep that in mind. But I think that people who have thought about this for over years make a valid point. Some people called, have called the whole sexual abuse thing well over a year ago. Um, some people have called the whole situation about, oh, maybe there are other people she's been sleeping with. Y'all call it that. So pat yourselves on the bat for that one. But I definitely think that there are a lot of factors playing into Alex and how she is the person she is today, which really explains why she lies so much because of the fact that this isn't new to her. I feel like the end of the day, yeah, she she lies to a bunch of people, but the real person she's lying to the most is herself. It's almost like Eddie, you know, like Larry really broke it down in terms of him wanting to be punished and stuff like that. And then you look at that uh, cellmate that was beating the crap out of him last week and this fool laughing the whole time. Yeah, I live for this stuff. Go ahead, hit me. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm down for this. It's like, yeah, he wants to be. It's almost like he does crap just to get the punishment because he feels guilty without admitting it. Kind of like Alex says, you know, oh, yeah, one time, no guilt with all these guys. Deep down, she definitely feels guilty. And she's trying to cope with her multiple personas, if you will, that she puts on to, uh, I guess you could say, get with these men. So I think this season of If Loving You Is Wrong is going to bring about a lot of psychological and mental questions. Kind of like in Sisters, you bring about, we bring about the topic of, you know, multiple forms of toxic relationships. So... Um, like I said, this video wasn't as long as I thought it would be, but like I said, I think as the season progresses, we're going to be doing more videos on topics, talking about the mental stability, the different layers of characters like Alex and Andy. So uh, thanks so much for the people who wanted me to do this video for a while. And um, I, I hope I hope this satisfies you for the time being, because I want to say it once again, even though I said it four times already, this topic is going to be explored more as the season goes on. So with that being said, I'd really appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up. Let's try to get for a goal of like 100 likes on this one. Uh, if you are new, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. That way you don't miss out on new content once I post it to the video. Uh, shout out to everyone who has helped the channel grow. We hit 115,000 subscribers a few hours ago. We are less than 200,000 views from 22 million views overall. And shout out to the patrons over on Patreon who support me for it. And you can do the same for as little as $2 a month for content that I post on there that I don't post here on YouTube. Also, if you want to follow me on social media, which I definitely recommend you do, links to all that good stuff in the description box below. And if you'd like to make any kind of donation to the channel, not mandatory, but I'd appreciate it. You can do, do so either on Cash App or PayPal. And with that being said, I think I have one more video I need to do then I'm done for the day. So thanks so much for tuning in. Let's enjoy this last full week of April, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.